Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, supportive vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today we are prepping for spring in the wormery. Comment below, where are you and uh, what are you doing to prep for spring? So we're going to look in on three tasks for spring in the wormery that will help you get your garden ready and then also get your wormery ready for the warmer weather. And in case you're wondering, this right here is a white sweet potato that has been cranking out slips for more than a year. I just cut off a little piece and put it in a jar and wait for it to root. And then come May, I have some really great sweet potato slips to plant in the garden. All right, let's get started. Okay, task number one is going to be really pushing the harvest here. So you can see that I have my large one half inch screen here and I'm going to take everything out that does not turn into a big chunk and that's going to go back into the business end. I will then put all of this castings into a mortar tray to let them dry out for the next couple of weeks, maybe even less than a week depending on how much I can do. And that way I'm going to go ahead and make as much room in the bin as possible, which turns into number three at the end. So stay to the end and I will show you how making all this room inside the bin is going to help me out later. Okay, so you can tell I'm getting lots of uh, shredded paper, little bits of things, and that's going to be okay. I can do the final sifting later. So at this end of the bin, things are meant to be a little bit more dry. Hopefully I'm not going to run into too many worms. But if I do, I can always go ahead and put them back in at the final sift later. So I am really, really pushing it here. But it's getting warmer. Uh, right now it is early March. And so I have about eight weeks, eight or ten weeks, before my last frost date. So it's really important that I get as many castings as possible so that my castings will be ready to go into the garden when I want to plant things out. So this is a little different than my procedure normally. I normally like these to dry out quite a bit more. And I usually swift, sift with the one quarter inch. Um, some people had asked and said that there was a, a different kit that actually didn't have the same size of screens that I do. The one that I bought has uh, the one half inch, which is what I'm using now, the quarter inch, the one eighth inch, the one twelfth inch, and then the one twentieth of an inch. I think there is a particular one that also has very, very small that goes down to one one hundredth of an inch. And uh, I will go ahead and put the metric on there for the screen for everybody else. I'm hoping to harvest about a third of this bin today to make room for my push. All right, we're doing good. I'm not seeing a whole lot of worms. When I start seeing a whole bunch of worms, then I will stop harvesting because that's uh, that's when I know the stuff is really not finished being consumed. Considering how damp the stuff I'm sifting right now is, honestly, it must be very close to being super finished because normally the worms will go ahead and stay in there. If there's anything left they can possibly use. As far as I know, there should be about five to eight pounds of European night crawlers in this bin. When we looked in on it four weeks ago, there was worms everywhere because I actually used the light above this bin to uh, keep my overwintered plants happy. And uh, so a lot of times the plastic trays, etc., on the top of the bin will actually prevent the worms from moving to where they want to be because everything is so nice and uh, at a good moisture for them. So I made a concerted effort to come down here a couple days ago, pull all those plants off the top, especially on the end that I wanted to harvest, so that the worms would uh, go on their merry way. 
So that has worked well. I'm only seeing a couple of worms, so, so far, so good. And so what we're seeing here is little balls of castings that are too wet to be sifted and they will go back to the beginning. Now I'm gonna try and get some of the top here because the, uh, the very far bottom is just going to be too wet to sieve at all. It'll just be one big clump, even with this really big screen. Okay, so it looks like I'm already getting into quite a bit of worms. So I probably am not going to meet my goal of getting um, a third of the bin done. Let's see. Yeah. Looks like we might just have to settle for a quarter, but that's okay. We can continue on with the same plan over the next month or so and continue to move out all the castings. So that's pretty good. Better than I expected, quite honestly. So then we have all of this left over and it is going to need moved down to the edge. So we're gonna do a 100% fluff, which I have not done in this bin for several, several months. So the bottom of it is pretty sticky. Now all those castings that I just pulled out will take about a week just in the mortar tray with that large surface area and uh, then they should be able to be sifted down to the one quarter inch which is my preferred texture for my castings. It does well in seed starting mix as well as in potting up for the things that I have planted earlier like my hot peppers those usually get put in much earlier than anything else because they take so much longer to grow. If I want to get ripe hot peppers, they need about 100 to 120 days here in my zone. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty wet down here. It's a good thing I got in here and get some air in there. As things start to warm up in the basement right now, it's about 65 degrees, but over the next month or so, it'll probably get closer to 70. And the worms are gonna start waking up a little bit more, and so are the microbes. So the faster everything works, the faster the decomposition happens, and that could cause kind of a, a boost in anaerobic bacteria if we don't get the air into the system. So it looks like we've done a pretty good job here. But yeah, it was, it was definitely time to get in here and fluff because this is uh, definitely, definitely overdue. It's very, very compacted at the bottom of the bin. Let's go over to my worm casting container and we're going to, my number two task for the spring is to evaluate my castings, see if they are moist enough, and then also put in the worm trap for to catch any of the little babies or babies that have grown up so that I can put them back in the system. I usually put them back in blue because all the castings go in the same container. Let's go look at the castings container and we'll do an evaluation and put in the worm trap. Okay, here we are at the place where I store my castings. The ones on top here do look a little bit dry, but let's let's go down deeper and see if if it's all the way through. Looks like the ones down at the bottom are still good and moist. And but that doesn't mean that it's good enough. Right now we want to make sure that biology wakes up and we also want to make sure that the worms stay in the wormery and don't go out in the garden, if at all humanly possible. So what I'm gonna do here is mix this up, get the ones from down deep, and make sure that the ones on top get mixed in good. And then I'm going to probably put almost a whole gallon of water in here 
because unfortunately, unfortunately, worm castings actually become hydrophobic, meaning they will repel water if they get too dry. So that is not what we want, in addition to the fact that if it's not wet enough, then the uh, microbes living inside the castings may die or go dormant, which this is the time of the year I want them to wake up and multiply and be happy. So once I put the lid on, this will actually kind of even out throughout the whole thing. But the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a place for all the little baby worms to come and hang out. So what I have here is some peels from my candy roaster squash that um, is uh, the end of them. I have one more left and then basically I'm gonna have to wait until next year I will we'll be out of winter squash. So I'm gonna bury that and any of the baby worms will all start to congregate in there and then next week when I put the rest of the castings in that we just harvested, I can pull out any of the baby worms that are in here. All right, back to the bin, and I'll show you the task number three that I have to do in order to get ready for spring. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this last bit over that is in progress, trying to not let the completely uneaten part get mixed in too much. It's not, this is half the size of blue, so there's not as much room to work with. I'm actually thinking of trying to figure out a way to make another full barrel like blue, but I don't have another shelf that is long enough to hold both sides of a barrel. So that's a work in progress. I'm still thinking about that. If you guys have any ideas, put your comments below. Okay, so I think I'm just going to grab all of this stuff and move it um, to a tote so I don't mix it all in. Try not to shoot myself in the foot for later too much. Okay, so let's get these guys moved over. Last time we fed potatoes and avocado and uh, quite a bit of bedding. But that's been four weeks ago. I don't know if we're going to get a proper worm ball. But we'll see. It does look like most of the worms are at this end of the bin. You can really tell they're, they're working on it, but that paper is still very recognizable. European nightcrawlers are my favorite worms. They're the best of both worlds, where they do a really good job on bedding. That's kind of a worm ball. I'll take it. And they do a, a really good job at both things. I think that they're the best utilitarian worm if you want to grow some up for fishing. Um, and then also they do a really good job at eating any sort of boxes that you want to shred up and give them. And then they're also really good at eating people food. So to me, they're the, the best worm. The red wigglers, probably, the reds and the blues do the best at eating people food, but the, the ENCs are the best utility player in my mind. Okay, now we're getting to task number three, which is going to be get the bed ready. Let me move you over. Get the bed ready for spring when the temperature gets another three or four degrees warmer, it's going to be the sweet spot for the European night crawlers. And that sweet spot is for breeding. So all of those cocoons that they've laid that have gone dormant over the course of the winter are all going to wake up and hatch. And that means I need a lot of bedding and a lot of variety of food so that those babies don't have to compete with the adults. I'm gonna put all of that leftovers in the bottom here. That all looks really, really uh, kind of dry, but it's gonna be okay because we're gonna top it off with a lot of water. Okay, so we're at about one quarter of the bin right now that has 
basically been unused, except for these straggler worms that came over when I was sifting. So we're gonna get them their food and also wet, super wet bedding. Baby worms like to hatch out and go to very, very damp places. And that is what we're gonna give them. Okay, first off, we'll give them the people food for the week. And then let me get them their bedding. All right, so that seems like a lot. That is about four gallons of the prepared bedding. Super, super wet, which is the goal. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some of the worm chow and mix it in. That way when those babies hatch, they have some really, really fast food that will be available for their tiny little mouths. Okay, let's look and see what we did. Okay, so what we've got over here is the part we'll harvest next time. Here's our in process that still has most of the worms in it. And then over here, we have all that brand new bedding and the food and then also the worm chow that the baby worms can get right into. And that's all it is. Those are the three tasks that I do for the spring. If you like this content and you want to see more about the European Nightcrawlers, I have a playlist I'll put right over there. And if you've already seen most of that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.